Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. We just got back from a six day getaway and I wanna talk about why I hate going away for vacation, especially in the summertime. And I'll give you a little spoiler alert. It's because everything goes to heck while you're gone. So owning acreage is a lot like having a full-time job. And here's the comparison I'll draw from. Not only is it the amount of work it takes to maintain it, but when you leave for vacation with a full-time job, usually you have to work really, really hard to get ahead before you leave. And then you've got to work really, really hard when you get back just to catch back up. So basically you're working the same amount of hours. You're just front loading it and then picking up some extra slack when you get back. And owning property is no different. Before I left, I came down here and restocked the roadside stand, cut about four or five acres worth of grass, did a couple of things to get ready. And now when I get back, I've got to cut all this grass again. And while we were gone, we got about three or four inches of rain in the six days we were gone and completely carved out the driveway here. This isn't even the worst of it. I'll take you up top and I'll show you where it really got chiseled out. Uh, at the end of this video, I will give you guys a pond update to show you what that three or four inches of rain did. So up here close to the house is where the driveway washout is the most significant. And I know why this happened because we were getting so much rain so fast. We've got a weather station and uh, it was telling me while we were away, it was putting down about four and a half inches of rain per hour. That's the rate that it was falling at. Like I said, I think we only got about three to four inches of rain total while we were gone. And we've got a ditch on the side of the driveway here to keep that water off of the driveway, but it was coming down so fast as it came down the hill, came down that little uh, access drive to get up to the trail, it was just overrunning that ditch and coming down the driveway. And you can see how much stone we lost into the yard. So I'm gonna have to come in here with the bucket on the tractor, try to rake as much of this as I can back up and put it back on the driveway. Not because I need the extra stone on the driveway, I could fix this up without doing that, but I wanna get it out of the yard and I might as well put it back in the driveway. Uh, but yeah, this chiseled this out pretty good. You can see there's probably a good, I don't know, eight inch rut there in the driveway. So we'll put the, uh, probably the box blade on for this job. Normally, if I'm just coming in here and touching up the driveway, I'll put the land plane on. But because we've got such severe ruts, I really wanna dig in with the box blade, carry a bunch of material with me to fill in the low spots. And then maybe once we get everything back into place, we can give it a finished drag with the, the land plane.
All right, so here is your pond update, guys. And this is another thing that I hate about going on vacation is projects that you thought you had plenty of time to get to, all of a sudden when you leave for a week, they need done right now. And one of those things is getting the beach area put in for the pond. Uh, like I said, we got three to four inches of rain while we were gone. And that really brought the pond level up very quickly. It's probably back up to where it was when we decided to drain it to do the pond repairs. Uh, and right about now is where we want our beach area to start. We want sand to come in from about where the excavator is sitting all the way down to here. So that way, kind of separate a nice sandy bottom versus a muddy, slimy bottom. That way when you walk in, this will be about, you know, shoulder deeper here. You'll be swimming by the time you get to this point and no longer touching the bottom once you get out here. Uh, first thing I need to do is bring in some kind of barrier to try to prevent as much of that sand from washing down into the bottom where it will, will pretty much be useless. Uh, and then once we do that and get a little bit of a dam here for the sand, we'll start throwing the sand in here in the bottom. I only have about one triaxle load there, so really my main goal is just to get this area here covered that's going to be underwater here soon. Uh, and then we can worry about ordering another triaxle and getting the upper end of the beach taken care of. So today's video is sponsored by Ariat, and I just wanted to tell you about a new product they just launched. Normally when I think of Ariat clothing, I think of outdoor workwear, the stuff we've been wearing for the last two years, but the product they just launched is made for when you get done with work or on the weekends. And that is these new Ariat Hilo tennis shoe sneakers. These things are extremely lightweight. Uh, they've got a nice padded foam bottom. They're entirely made of mesh, which makes them very breathable. Uh, and they're just a very comfortable shoe. They wrap around your ankle nice and snug here, but down around where your toes and the ball of your foot go, you nice and opened up. I was uh, checking out Ariat's website to see how they were describing them, and they say when you take your work boots off, you put your helos on, and I think that is the perfect way to describe them. I will leave a link in the description down below. Also, I wanted to let you know that Ariat is also running a denim sale from August 4th to August 18th, where if you buy two pairs of jeans, you'll get $25 off. Let's get back to the video. All right, guys, well, we're back from vacation. We got the driveway fixed up. We got the beach area started. I mean, it's nowhere near complete. I still got a lot of cleanup here left to do. Still need a whole lot more sand up here to get some you know, sand outside of where the water line's gonna be. Uh, but this will at least get it to the point where if we get another big rainstorm and the pond comes up another foot or two, we're not gonna be working down in the water. I did leave this a little bit light because as we add more sand up here, it's inevitably going to wash downhill and fill in this and this will get deeper and deeper with sand. 
and probably adding a triaxle lodal sand will be something we have to do every couple of years to keep the top area nice and clean. Um, you may be wondering why we didn't put geomat down this time on the entire beach area like we did last time. And it's a combination of two things. The first is I saw Neil from Dig Drive DIY do this. He just said, hey, the bottom is clay. Stuff doesn't really grow that well in clay. And you're gonna have weeds that are gonna grow in the sand no matter what, even if you put the geomat down to keep the weeds down. Uh, and we found that to be true. When we had the beach area set before, uh, we put the geomat underneath all of it, and we still had a time, heck of a time fighting weeds growing on top of the sand on top of the geomat. So I really just think it's a waste. The only reason we put the geomat on the uh, sand dam there is just so that that sand wouldn't wash through all those big number four rock we put in there. So yeah, the beach has started. There's how much water we have in the pond right now. Uh, my mom actually took some video of the pond while it was raining and uh, it was crazy. The, the uh, French drain line that we have coming into the pond, it was swinging around in the pond like a noodle with how much water was coming out. It looked like a fire hydrant was loose in the pond, uh, which is a good thing. So um, <clears throat> really still too early to tell. I mean, this, like I said, right now, this is about the point it would get to when it would start leaking before. Um, but we won't really know until we get a week or two of dry weather to see if the pond holds or if it stays steady. I think we got some more rain in the forecast today and tomorrow. Uh, so as long as it keeps raining, we're not gonna know if it's holding water, but if we get a week or two of dry weather, then we'll know if it starts receding or not. Anyways, guys, I think that about wraps this one up. I don't mean to come across as though I'm complaining about going on vacation. I like going on vacation. We're very fortunate that we're in a position that we can go on vacation. Uh, but it's just one of those things when you own land and property, there's a lot of work that needs to be done day in, day out. And when you leave for a week, that work doesn't get done if I'm not here. Anyway, I want to give a big thank you to Ariat for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget, go check out the link in the description. If you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, one more thing I wanted to show you is these blue pond dye packets that I got from Tractor Supply. I already threw one in here to get that muddy color out of there and start adding some blue. This says it'll treat up to a quarter acre pond or 500,000 gallons. I threw one in earlier this morning and it improved the color some, but I'm gonna throw this second one in. And I like this so much better than uh, the jugs that you get because it's just such a mess. There's no way to put that stuff in the pond without getting it all over yourself. And it's very difficult to get off. It takes about three showers to get it off. This stuff is no mess. It's a water soluble bag and there's like a dry granular stuff inside there. So once you throw it in, the bag disappears and the granular then dissipates throughout the water. So as easy as that. And hopefully within a couple hours, our pond will be nice and blue. I'll put you guys on a time lapse to see if we can get that to dissolve here in the water before the end of the night.